It's Thanksgiving, so let's talk turkey. Yeah, that's right. Every Thanksgiving, we get inundated with questions about how to cook a turkey on the smoker, on the big green egg, on whatever grill you're using. Well, today we're going to cover everything. We're going to start with a simple brine. If you've never brined your turkey, you are missing out. I'm going to show you the simplest brine there is. You can add to it from here, but let's start with a simple brine and we'll get this turkey going. So the turkey that we're going to start with today is from our friends at Meat and Bone. It's a completely natural turkey. Um, it's raised by the Amish up in uh, Troy, Michigan. They're actually raised in naturally vented farmhouses with free access to food and water. Um, they, they live on a diet of um, vegetables, which is corn, and proteins, which is soybeans. So it's got a really supernatural um, diet. There's no hormones, no, stero no steroids, um, nothing like that. So they're all natural, super high quality. You want to start with a good bird, because if you want a good product, you got to start with the right one at the beginning. The first step in doing this, like I said, is patting it dry. We're not actually going to pat it dry. What we're going to do is we're actually going to clean out the inside. So if your turkey came with one of these little plastic leg holders, just kind of pop the leg out of there open up your cavity and just wipe it out inside. I like to do this, just gets any extra impurities or anything like that out of there. It's probably not necessary, but my mom taught me to do it. Her mom taught her to do it. So guess what? That's what I do now. So once you do that, you can take it and then you can just pop that leg right back into the holder, right back into place. And now that our turkey is ready, let's prepare it for the brine. I'm teaching you the most simple basics of brine. This is the bare minimum that you can do, all right? You can always add more to this. A lot of people do. But what you're going to do is you're going to start with one gallon of water, which I have here, and I use kosher salt, okay? One cup of kosher salt. One cup of kosher salt. So we've got that to one gallon. This is four quarts. Four quarts equals a gallon. So we're going to use that. A lot of people will heat this up. I don't find necessary. You just want to make sure everything is dissolved. You can heat it up if you want to. It helps it dissolve a little quicker for our intents and purposes. I'm just going to pour it in here and get this thing going. And just stir it up and get this all dissolved. Like I said, heating it up will help it dissolve quicker. Next, we need to use our brining bucket or whatever container you're going to use. Make sure it's big enough for your turkey, first of all. This is a pretty cool thing. I went to Firehouse Subs, if you have one near you. They will sell you a food safe bucket that they used for pickles for like $3. And plus, I think the money goes to the, goes to the firefighters. So it's actually really good. So we're going to take our bucket, take our turkey, cavity side up. Okay, you can even take your legs out for this, cavity side up, because we want all this moisture to get all inside this whole turkey. All right, and very simple process now. We're going to take our water that we stirred everything into and just pour it in. And the last step, we're going to cover it up. Now, if you don't have a bucket like this, they make brining bags that you can put into the buckets to make sure it's food safe. If you're using a bucket, make sure you're using a clean, food safe bucket. It's important. We don't want any contamination or anything like that. So we're going to cover this up. We're going to let it sit overnight. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in a tub. I have a tub like this. I'm going to set it in there. I'm going to surround it with ice so that it stays nice and cold. We're going to brine this overnight and we'll be back tomorrow to cook it. All right, here we are the next day. We got our turkey in here that brined all night. Let's see what we got here. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna be handling turkey. So we gotta put some gloves on for food safety purposes. We wanna make sure we got a nice moist roast. So we got this baby. We're gonna try and get as much of the liquid out as possible here. Okay, empty her out. She even feels heavier. <laughs> Incidentally, on the big green egg, we're gonna cook this on a large I find on the eggs between a 12 and a 15 pound turkey works the best. They just seem to come out great. Anything bigger than that kind of changes it a little bit, but 12 to 15 pounds is your ideal range for on the big green egg. We want to just drop, rub it real dry, get all the moisture off of it, and we want to get all the moisture out of the inside too. We do not stuff our bird, okay? Stuffing a bird allows it to cook in, uh, not evenly, okay? So we want to cook nice and evenly. When you stuff the bird, doesn't allow heat to get inside that cavity, so it doesn't cook from the inside. You're gonna wind up with dry, overcooked outside meat and nothing done on the inside. So don't stuff your bird. It also isn't so food safe, okay? Woo, we are moving right along here. Our next step is to prep the bird for cooking. Woo, we're moving like along, like I said. Now, what I like to do is I like to call what, what I like to call tucking the wings. So you take your wings and you stretch them out and you take this pointy part and you kind of bend it and stick it underneath like that. Do that on both sides. Tuck it underneath, so that it stays like that. 
okay? It gives you a little bit more stable base when it's sitting on the grill and a little bit more evenly cooked too. So the other part I like to do is on the back here, you got this big giant flap of skin. You don't need all of this. So what I like to do is I like to just cut a little bit of it off. Again, you can put this if you're gonna make gravy, save this, put it in your gravy. If not, just, oh, no, don't eat it. Just kidding, not a good idea. So we've got that done now. The big part here, and this is gonna be odd to a lot of people, is a bag of ice. Okay, what is Ron doing with a bag of ice? Well, this is a trick that I learned from my friend, Ray Lampy, Dr. Barbecue, in his cookbook. What you do is, the, the dark meat is really best when it's cooked to 185 degrees, but the white meat is best at 165 degrees. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this bag of ice on the breasts for about an hour before we cook it. It's gonna cool down the breasts a lot. It's gonna allow the, the um, dark meat, the thighs, the drumsticks, to come up to temperature a little bit more. So as we're cooking, the dark meat's gonna have a little bit of a head start and it should all be done right about the same time perfectly for everyone, whatever you like, white meat or dark meat. Which one do you like? I like white meat. Which one do you like? Let me know in the comments. I'm really curious to know. The reason I did this before I lit the charcoal is it's gonna give about a good amount of time for us to light the charcoal, get the grill up to temperature, which you're gonna cook this to bird at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. But while it's doing that, it's gonna give us time for these breasts to cool down nicely with the ice on them. So kind of killing two birds with one stone. That's a turkey joke for you. When you're cooking your turkey, for me, poultry seems to really absorb smoke heavily. So I don't like to go with a lot of smoking woods. For me, our lump charcoal is plenty of good. Hey, did you check this out, by the way? Look at this, the Fogo Santa bag of cold. Do you know somebody that's been naughty or nice? Go on our website, there's a link down below. You can actually order those bags and give somebody an actual bag of coal for Christmas. So you know they've been bad. Even if they've been good, they've been bad, let's face it. So anyway, so we're not gonna use any kind of smoking woods. If you do wanna use some kind of smoking woods, add a little more flavor. Um, something light like apple or peach, something like that is, is real like a heavy hickory or mesquite is gonna be to me just too much. So keep it real light. I like to use just the charcoal. It gives it just enough smoke flavor that the family really enjoys it. As I said before, we're gonna cook this at 350 degrees and we're almost there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this opener up and we are going to put our convector in. Convector, again, is used for cooking indirect, meaning no flames, no heat directly underneath it. Makes it cause, it's called a convector, as in convection. It makes the air come up around the outside and go like this all over it and get the top, the sides, everything all at once with air movement. So let's let it come back up to temperature and then we'll put our turkey on. So while the convector is heating up with the grill, we are now ready to take our ice off of here. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna dry off the turkey. Okay, and get all moisture. Moisture is dry skin's enemy. This should be quite all right because we are going to use duck fat spray. Yes, duck fat spray. Good stuff here. So we're gonna give it just a quick spray. You don't have to coat it. You're just gonna give it a light coating and we're gonna season it. Our last step before cooking is gonna be seasoning it. Now, I'm not big on you putting barbecue rub. If you wanna put barbecue rub on this, you can. So completely up to you to flavor, whatever flavors you want. That's the nice part about seasoning. And now there's so many of them, there's, it's up to the individual. So we sprayed it down with our duck fat spray, but I'm just gonna use a little bit of garlic powder, not a ton. The other part, I'm just gonna put a little bit of black pepper, all right? And I like to, of course, grind my own black pepper. The one thing I'm not gonna add to it is salt. Why? Because we brined it overnight already in salt. So it's gonna already have a nice salty flavor to it. Woohoo! time to put the bird on. All right, we're at 350 degrees. We got nice clean charcoal. We started with brand new charcoal in here, no used stuff, because we want a nice clean fire. And there we go. Look how nice that sits in there with those wings tucked like that legs here like this, beautiful. Let's let her sleep. How to plan your Thanksgiving meal or your turkey meal. How much turkey do you need? So the general rule of thumb is when you're buying a whole turkey, you wanna buy one pound per person. That doesn't mean that everybody's gonna eat one pound, but by the time that you cook it, it's gonna shrink down a little bit. By the time you carve it, you're gonna lose a little bit. So if you use an average of one pound per person when you're buying your turkey, you will be in good shape. We've got the thermometer in it that came with that little pop-up sucker, but I don't really trust those things. So we're gonna use our meter. I like to use the meter because the thing is wireless. Um, you can find it right on our website. There's a link in the description down below. I can tell you this, it's coming up on that time. Makes a great holiday gift. So let's put this in here. So we're gonna put it into the thickest part of the breast and gonna get to the bone and just back it off a little bit. We don't want it touching the bone. That will not give us an accurate description of the temperature. So there we have it, we'll let it roll. All right, we're about halfway there now. So what I like to do, I like to spin it. This way, in case we have any hot spots or anything like that, 
we're cooking evenly. So we just spin it, see how the other side is more brown than this? Now we're gonna let this side get nice and brown too. Our turkey is ready, 168 degrees. We want a touch over, but that's okay. Tong check, they're all ready to use. Oh, look at that baby, golden brown. Golden brown, look at that thing. Is that beautiful or what? Is that a beautiful bird or what? And I love it when a plan comes together and it comes out right. Now, you should not eat your bird until about 15 minutes at least to a half an hour after it comes off the grill. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lightly tent it. We're not gonna wrap it tight. We're just gonna lightly tent it so that it keeps some of its temperature in there and doesn't allow all the heat to escape. We're gonna let it sit just like with a steak. All those juices are gonna redistribute through that meat. We're gonna have a beautiful juicy, juicy bird. So let it sit for at least 15 minutes before you carve this thing. We're at my favorite time, the slicing and tasting time. So let's break out my trusty knives here and get to slicing. Oh, look at that. I love me some big green egg turkey. That is just fantastic. The skin came out beautiful. It's nice and moist. It got just a touch. We let it go just a, literally a couple degrees over. It probably could have been a little more moist, but man, it's still running juices whenever we cut into it. So I'm really happy with the final product. It's delicious. Like really delicious. Mm, wow, it is really delicious. It's gonna make for a super, super happy Thanksgiving. So you can make gravy, put a drip pan underneath it, throw some water, some broth in there, some onions halfway through, make yourself a great gravy, whatever you wanna do. I like to make some Alabama white sauce. Google that, it's outstanding on turkey. So that is my big green egg turkey. I hope that you and your family have a great and happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy each other. There's lots to give thanks for, so remember, be grateful, be kind, get out and grill, and we'll see you next week on The Grow on the Fogo Life.